Well, hello there, Pussy Collective. Happy Moon Day. Happy Monday. Uh, it is 3.33 here on the Pacific Coast, and it is time for another Moon Day Musings. Episode number three. Excited I'm going to keep doing these. I hope I get some more traction from you ladies. Um, today, I want to muse about orgasm. Now, I was probably going to talk about something else because there's so much, so, so much I have to say. Um, but I had a request, uh, I believe from Lexi, uh, when I posted my photo of my Venus mat, uh, I think it was on Friday, the big rose mat and uh, on my bed that I'm sitting on. Hey, ladies. Hey, Carol. Hey, hey, oh, hey Anik. Hey, Joni. Yay, yay, yay. Um, so I posted that picture, and I said I was going to be trying it out at my Epic Saturday Night, uh, which is a series of um, ways that my husband Rano and I, for those of you that know me or know my husband, know Rano, or those of you who don't, uh, one of the practices that he and I do often is we create something called Epic Saturday Night Rituals. And the gist of it is, funny enough, we actually just um, – got interviewed on a podcast that's coming out in April, so I'll let you all know about that podcast. But Rano and I have known each other for a very long time. We've worked together in business since before we were in relationship. So we were friends, then business partners, then lovers, then husband and wife. So we have found that it's easy to drop into like the friend slash colleague slash buddy box. And it can has been in the past more challenging to keep our sex and intimacy and romance alive. So a couple of years ago, we decided to remedy that. And we started uh, doing these rituals called our epic Saturday night rituals. And they could be any night. Um, a Saturday night seemed to be the easiest. And they would be intentional nights where we'd set aside to explore each other and our sexuality and do it in a sacred setting. Um, for those of you uh, may relate to this, one of the things that I've found and um, part of what I'm in the closet around a little bit is... Um, being uh, being a pussy oracle still. I'm, a little, I'm not in the closet around being a pussy oracle, but I am in the closet around being a, um, uh, a teacher of this particular type of orgasm that I'm going to speak about in a minute. And so anyways, Rano and I ultimately decided that we would do these very sacred settings because for me, I am a uh, sensual, uh, energetic erotic blueprint. Um, for those of you that have ever taken the erotic blueprint quiz with one of my colleagues, Jaya Ma. I think that's her last name, Jaya. Uh, but you can Google it, uh, or I'll post the link afterwards. Um, I'm a sensual, uh, energetic, sensual energetic uh, type, which means for me, sexuality has to have an energetic connection, and it has to have a lot of sensuality, which I think a lot of women need that. Like, I like the right vibe. I need to be in the mood. I want to have a beautiful environment. I want to be touched and caressed before I get into like straight up sex. Whereas society, I have found typically, um, and even in some of the like more tantric um, sensual circles that I've seen or been a part of, there's still this very, uh, because of just the conditioning of society, there's like a, and, and this comes in film and everything else, there's kind of like this wham, bam, thank you, ma'am, um, which would be really an, uh, the erotic blueprint type would talk about it as um, a sexual type, where somebody just wants penetration, they just want to be fucked, they're just, that's their thing. Um, and while many women can be that, um, it, a lot of us think we're that and we're not that. Because our bodies just aren't turned on by that. So I'm one of those people, and one of the things that I avoided for a long time was teaching any woman about orgasm. Now, I typically, I actually don't teach women about orgasm. My pussy oracle work, my pussy reclamation work is right now at this point um, here to help women really get, I mean really get, the reverential nature of the sacred portal. Like, like the super reverential nature of our sacred, super, sacred portal. And I want to actually even peel away any, any sexuality that is attached to pussy for a, a period of time because pussy has been either overly sexualized or overly shamed. And there's not a lot happening in between. 
um, which is unfortunate. And so we either are overly sexualized around our connection to pussy, and that's all we think about when I even talk about pleasure or even the word pussy, most women just immediately go to sex and men, <laughs> all of us, um, because of this, and um, or overly shamed, meaning there's been trauma or we've had a lot of you know ill will or feelings or disconnect from our pussy, and we don't even want to go there or talk about it. And so for me, the work that I'm currently doing is around just magnifying the magnificence and the majesty of pussy so that we can begin to see the sacred, sacred, sacred part of our, of our, of our whole body, yes, including our sexuality, as something that is to be revered and to be held with reverence and, the, and to be held in a space of worship. That's why I've created things like Pussy Church and I, the work I, I consider my pussy service a ministry, truly. Because when I'm oracling, when I'm actually sitting in front of a pussy and reading the information that's there and sharing the wisdom that is showing up in the symbols and the, the divine design of a woman's yoni, there's something so sacred and there's so much powerful information for each woman's story that comes through that, that portal, through a reading. So currently my mission is to just let us look at the majesty of pussy long enough to feel such deep profound reverence and awe and then we can sprinkle back or lay back all the sexuality pieces that we want. Okay, so there's a long setup to this conversation I want to have with you because as Lexi requested, I had a picture of my Venus mat out. I spent Saturday night with my husband. We did one of our epic Saturday nights. And the reason why epic Saturday nights came about was because I really wanted something more sensual and energetically connected to then activate our sexuality. So that's how that all came about. And for, gosh, I think like 15 maybe or 18 years now, I have discovered the capacity within me to be um, what you would call a squirter, uh, right? So I can ejaculate. Um, there's a very sacred term for this. It's called Amrita. And there's a lot more I can say about Amrita. And I will in the episodes to come. And again, I do plan on uh, creating some sort of pussy money magic offering or container or course or free series. I'm not really sure how it's going to look because there's a lot, lot, lot of information I want to share with you about what I've discovered. But for today, I just want to illuminate, um, you know, a little conversation around female ejaculations. The reason why I have a Venus map is because my sex is very wet and messy. <laughs> my orgasms tend to be very wet. Not always, but mostly. And over the years, Rano and I have used towels and everything. And now we literally just have like a straight up system when we cover the bed and this like rubber sheet cover and we put down the Venus mat and we put a towel over that and then we have towels on. <laughs> you know, it's like, it's a process. Um, <clears throat> but I found that a lot of women are not as connected to their ability to um, experience female ejaculations as, as we could be. And I've been asked several times to teach this to women. And I may someday, but the thing is, and I was very inspired actually, um, I spend Mondays in my Oracle time. And so for the last uh, 40 minutes before this time with you, I was like, okay, I'm going to just be in my Oracle lair. Here I am in my Oracle lair. And I'm going to just get in the space of um, just being with me and pussy and the energy of pussy. And what does that mean? Because otherwise I can probably like many of you just get really caught up in all the things that need to be done, all the emails, all the Facebook checking, all of the communications, all the business things, everything. So I typically spend my Mondays in Oracle time, but I haven't because I've been so busy lately. So today was my Oracle time, and I just ordered this new book called Cunt. Great book so far. I had just started reading it. That's what I decided to do in my Oracle time today is read this book. And the foreword is by Betty Dodson, who I'd heard her name before, but I never knew who she was or what she had done or how much she actually pioneered um, in the feminine erotic uh, masturbation uh, conversation and how much she's actually done to bring so much liberation to women. So I'm a little embarrassed that I didn't know fully, fully who she is, but you know, you know what you know when you know when you know. So anyway, so I started reading this. I haven't even actually got to the book, but I decided to look up Betsy, or Betty rather, and um, 
I watched a video about how she talks about how she teaches women uh, how to orgasm. But then she said, and that was really important for me to hear, especially before this, uh, this Monday musings, is that she doesn't actually teach the women how to do it because women figure out how to do it on their own. She just helps them understand some of the concepts and gives them a space to explore. Um, that was the gist of what I got from the very short window video I saw of hers. And that's kind of what I would probably do is um, when I, when I, when and if I decide to actually move forward with any sort of um, teachings around the topic of female ejaculation, uh, I would, I, I'm not here to teach any, like I don't know technique. Like I couldn't tell you like do this, do that. There are videos for that. There are people that teach that. There are things I can point to about how to do it. There's even books written. That's how I first figured it out. Um, there's a great book called um, called Female Ejaculations by Deborah Sundahl. And I know she teaches courses and trains women on how to teach it and do it. So there's a lot of people out there, not maybe a lot of people, but resources out there to find that. But what I have discovered is it's more than a technique. It's number one, we have to get in reverential relationship with all of our female anatomy first and foremost. And that includes um, connecting with our pussies and releasing any shame that we have. I think that's like number one ground zero for the types of uh, orgasmic female ejaculation that I would teach about um, and what I experience. And so basically, one of the things is that we need to be able to surrender to our own pleasure in order to actually allow this gush of fluid to come out and actually have it alchemized from what it might be, which they have tested it. And I'm going to do some testing myself. I have a little side project in the, in the works. Well, I'll keep you posted as things uh, progress there. Um, but I found that it's truly an alchemical process with women that where it might typically and sometimes come out because it does come out of the urethra. So it does sometimes have property of urine um, and traces of urine and sometimes a little bit more like urine and sometimes totally clear and totally scent free and light and airy and nectar, full nectar. But I'm finding that that has to do with the level of which we're fully surrendered, excuse me, surrendered into our own pleasure. Now, to answer your question, Lexi, uh, Yes, I did have a very wet, uh, yummy night with my man, and the Venus mat held up fabulous. Although it wasn't like fully under me, we—I mean, under just me—it was actually under, under, under things because we make a mess, so we have a lot of layers. Um, but then we pulled it out the next morning, so we'd already peeled all the sheets and everything off. Next morning, we had another little fun tryst, and I put it underneath me, and uh, it worked. It worked great. It's—it just felt so amazing to have this gorgeous rose, which of course reminds it's like the lineage of Mother Mary. Often I see the archetype of Mother Mary in the design of our pussies, of many women, and um, and just the, the energetic of flower and rose. So it felt very sacred and beautiful to have this piece of art that also catches the fluids. And this these mats are good for more than just, you know, female ejaculation. It's for any type of sex. It's, you don't want to go to bed with um, a you know, tampon or something in when you have your period, you can lay on it, you can bleed on it. Like it's a really, really beautiful product uh, from Jules. So I did post a link if you want to order your own. I'll, I'll post another link below this video if you want to check it out and get yourself a Venus mat. Even if you're just wanting to have it as a ritualistic way to add more yumminess to any sort of self-pleasure or pleasure with another or anything. Like I'm so in love with this new design of this mat and it's so big. Um, the other one I had was smaller um, and a little bit more bunchy. So this one I'm really appreciating. So we had an amazing, amazing night. Um, yes, I, uh, you know, I uh, opened up the gates of my Amrita to flow out. And yes, I enjoyed the Venus mat. So for those of you that are curious and want to know more, post below. I mean, I can speak more about this. And if you're interested in a class, I don't know, maybe I'll offer one. I'm still a bit like a little nervous because like I said, I don't know how to say technique. I really just can speak it from an esoteric terms because again, remember I'm sensual energetic. So to me, my lens through life and my lens through pussy is how can we make this beautiful and sacred 
first and then bring the pleasure. And that's just how I'm, I'm particularly wired and my preference and my turn on works. That not, may not be the case for you. Um, again, go check out your own erotic blueprint. Uh, you can probably just, again, I'll post it in here. But um, so, you know, orgasm is such a personal thing. And I really loved hearing what, what Betty had to say on the video I just watched, just about like she's only experienced orgasm through clitoral stimulation. And there's lots of different orgasm types. And my, uh, I also tend to orgasm through clitoral stimulation. Um, I've learned to have what they call, I think it's like an A-frame orgasm, which is more of a, um, a vaginal orgasm. Um, I've, I've learned that through just you know following different sex experts and hearing about how it's done. And that's really how I even learned to ejaculate. I just read about what was possible, and then I tuned into the sensations that the people in the people who wrote the books or whatever I read the articles have described, and then I just committed to allowing myself to receive that pleasure. So um, I think, oh, one last thing I'll say, and I know this is getting long. Um, one last thing is that I was sharing about this on, on the interview we did on the Love Lab podcast. Again, I'll share that when it's out. Is one of the biggest ways that we can turn ourselves off as women um, is getting caught in our heads, right? Really thinking we're so good at thinking and we're so good at being in our heads because this culture really values smarts and intellect and logic and left brain thinking. And, you know, the, the more feminine side and the right side is really like embodiment. And so the more we can actually tune into the sensations of our body and not get caught in our head, which is way easier said than done, especially if you're, you know, a problem solver or you have a job or a career that requires a lot of thinking or a lot of, you know, which most of us do. That's the culture we live in in America here. And, you know, there's a few other countries that do that as well. Um, so those of you that don't do that and you're in a different cu culture, please do chime in if you're watching this and share um, just your perspective. I welcome that. Um, but the quickest thing to create a dry pussy, as I like to say, is, Start getting in your head about things, and then you'll notice your turn on goes way down. Um, I have a dear friend, Eva Clay. I uh, want to Google her. She talks a lot about the uh, neural pathways connected and how the brain and the pussy work, and how uh, what we can do to help work our nervous system to actually work more turn on and and not be so turned off in various ways so i, I highly highly recommend you tune into some what eva clay i think it's eva clay.com um is speaking about and one of these days i'll, I'll have her on and we'll, we'll have some fun together um so yeah, so just be aware of where your mind wants to get in the way. And if you ever haven't experienced an orgasm or you haven't experienced different types of orgasm, I just encourage you to just be kind to yourself and create sacred settings. So I would say take the blueprint quiz, find out what's your type, work with your type if it feels accurate to do so, uh, stay out of your head, get yourself a Venus mat just for the sake of just the fun, sensual play of it all and having such a beautiful thing to support the the ritual of um, sensuality and sexuality for yourself and uh, you can do some research, read some books, watch some videos. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it. I think that it's all very uh, individual and we get to explore as women. And also number one, spend some time with your pussy. Like I spend a lot of time with my pussy <laughs> and I just made a new commitment to actually spend some time with my actual pussy because I haven't really, um, established yet a full everyday daily literally daily practice where I'm in connection with her believe it or not right like even me who is a big a big stand for pussy and a voice for pussy on this planet and I'm even having to deepen into my own practices so it's a commitment I've made for myself with another sisterhood that I'm part of and I'm excited to share more of that and I think that's all I got. So I've got another call I got to get to, but I would love to hear your thoughts. I'd love to hear your questions. I'd love to hear your brags about your own pleasure. And are you a squirter or are you not a squirter? Are you curious or are you not? What kind of orgasms do you have? Um, what kind of rituals do you do? Um, let's get a juicy conversation going on in here. And um, yeah, until next week, 
This is Sierra Sullivan with my Moon Day Musings. And, uh, oh, and stay tuned, actually, because um, this Friday is International Women's Day. And I've had a request from some of these very amazing conscious men in my life to do a Pussy Church for Men offering. So this Friday, I'm going to be offering a Pussy Church for everybody, including the men. I don't know if I'm going to call it that. Um, and it's going to be a virtual online event. And I will definitely make sure that I post it in here. So be on the lookout for that when I get, get it all set up and ready to go. And we're going to open up this conversation to men. And there's a lot of great men who are so curious and really need to hear this information equally as we as women need to hear this information. So going out on a limb, it's a bit scary for me to open it up to men, but I feel like it's an important thing to do. Um, and I work in the realm of relational uh relational evolution so it's part of what's next so tune in for that we'd love to get you ladies on that call and hear what the men have to say and open up that dialogue and um other than that i'll see you next monday 3:33 p.m pacific for my next moon day musings and we'll go with whatever comes up or whatever you might ask me might be the next topic so shout out to lexi for that request and all of you for being here thanks for tuning in we'll talk to you soon bye-bye